from the New Living Translation. It's Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers and or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. You may remember that in October 2013, our federal government has shut down its business for 17 days. As U.S. government shutdown not only created chaos in Washington, D.C., but also caused millions of Americans to face inconvenience. At that time, some crazy thoughts popped into my head. What will happen if God's kingdom shutdown occurs? What does God's kingdom shutdown look like? Imagine what would it be like if God decided to install voicemail during his kingdom shutdown. Imagine praying and hearing this. Thank you for calling heaven. For English, press 1. For Spanish, press 2. And for all other languages, press 0. Please select one of the following options. Press 1 for request. Press 2 for thanksgiving, pray 3 for complaints, and pray 4 for all other inquiries. I'm sorry all of our angels and saints are busy helping other sinners right now. However, your prayer is important to us and it will be answered in order it was received. Please stay on the line. If you would like to speak to God, press 1. His Son, press 2. And the Holy Spirit, press 3. If you would like to hear King David sing a psalm while you are waiting, press 4. To find out if a loved one has been assigned to heaven, press 5. Then enter his or her social security number, followed by the pound sign. If you receive a negative response, please hang up and try area code 666. For reservation at heaven, please enter J-O-H-N and followed by the numbers 316. For answers to nagging questions about dinosaurs, the age of the earth, life on the other, other planets, and where Noah's Ark is, please wait until you arrive. Our computer shows that you have already prayed today, and please hang up and try again tomorrow. The office is closed for kingdom shutdown. Please pray again when the kingdom reopens its business, hopefully on Monday after 9.30 a.m. If you are calling after hours and need emergency assistance, please contact your local pastor. Have a blessed day. Can you imagine this, would, this thing would happen? If God's kingdom shutdown occurs, there will be no God's providential care. It means no daily provision, no protection, no deliverance, no salvation, no forgiveness and no grace, no answered prayers, no nothing. But praise God that His kingdom does not and has not and will never shut down its business. How do we know this? In our passage this morning tells us that God is always working and His kingdom never shuts down. No matter where we are, no matter what crisis we face, no matter what time of the day or night, God will always be there for us. So let's dive into our passage this morning go to verse 1. I look up to the mountains, does my help come from there? 
life is full of dangers, full of surprises. In moments of stress, need, or intimidation, where can we look for help? When adversary or tragedy such as disease, injury, accident, death of loved ones, or natural disaster come into our lives, where can we get help? Some may rely on support of friends and families, and others may rely on a faith community. These are good things. I'm glad that you are surrounded by many people in your life, your good friends or family members and church members around you in times of your crisis. But the psalmist answer is no. No. Our help is not coming from someone merely familiar with our situation or merely experienced in similar situation. In verse 1 follows, Then where my help come from? Verse 2 says, My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from Yahweh who made the heavens and earth. Who is Yahweh? Who is the Lord? Why should we call on Lord or Yahweh for help? Because He is the maker of heaven and earth. We can translate this in many different ways, but I can say this to you. God is bigger than our troubles. If someone asks me, Moses, what does that mean? God is the maker of heaven and earth. It means to me, God is bigger than our troubles. Imagine you lift your eyes to see troubles in your lives in this, in this morning. You brought something into this worship and ask God's help in your life. So you lift your eyes to see troubles in your lives this morning. And what you see make you anxious and scared. But now you lift your eyes higher and looks beyond to the very one who holds your troubles in his hands. Do you see him? The one who made the heaven and earth. With Yahweh himself on your side, there's no need to fear anything that has happened in our lives. Why? Because nothing is beyond God's reach and control. Back at the turn of the 20th century, there was an inventor who invented a new machine. He built several of these machines. And one factory bought a machine, and after a while, they had a problem with it. And it quit working. Engineers from the company looked at it and tried to figure it out what was wrong with it. No one could figure it out what was wrong. Finally, The owner of the factory called the inventor. He came out. He looked at it for a couple of minutes. And then he got out of he got out of tool and tinkered on it for a couple of minutes. He turned to the owner and said, Well, your problem is solved. The inventor handed the owner a bill for a hundred dollars. Now remember, this was over 100 years ago, and $100 was a lot of money then. The owner exclaimed, $100? You were only tinkered around for a few minutes. The inventor replied, $10 for tinkering, and $90 for knowing where to tinker. (laughs) The inventor knew more about the machine than anyone. Because he built it. God knows more about what you need because he created you to begin with. God is much, much, much bigger than our troubles. God knows how to support us. God knows how to deliver us. God knows how to help us. Never forget That God created you and He is your daddy. 
That's why we should call on Yahweh for help. In the first two verses, we see who the Lord is, who the Yahweh is. And in the remaining six verses, three to eight, we see what He does. What can He do for us when we face difficult challenges in our lives? Verse 3, He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over, you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or slips. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps, watches over you as you come and go, both now and forever. <clears throat> what does God promise to do? Did you hear watch over and then keeps, the Lord keeps, the Lord watch over us? You know, how many times he repeated? I highlighted in my <laughs> note here. He watched over in verse 3, tw- three and 4 uh, twice, and then 5, 6, once, and 7 and 8. He repeat this words, watch over kids four times. So every single verse, he, he says, watch over us or keep us from all harms. As our keeper, God watches over every single move we make. And He cares about the finest detail of our lives. He cheers when we are faithful to His calling. His heart breaks whenever we fall down. That's why we must run to the Lord in every circumstance because He is our keeper. He promised that He will watch over us and He will keep us from all harms. God will guide us as we go on our journey of life, as we face the dangers of the day or night, and as we walk in the will of God and depend on His power, He will be with us as our keeper and preserver. That's what He promised to us in verses 3 through 8. The American Indians had a unique practice of training young braves. One night... Of a boy's 13th birthday, after learning hunting, scouting, and fishing, and various other skills, he was put on final test. He was placed in a dense, dense forest to spend the entire night alone. Until then, he had never been away from the security of the family or, and the tribes. But on this night, He was blindfolded and taken several miles away. When When he took up the blindfold, he was in the middle of thick woods, and he was terrified. Every time a twig snapped, he visualized a wild animal ready to pounce. After what seemed like an eternity, dawn broke and the first rays of sunlight entered the interior of the forest. Looking around, the boy saw flowers, trees, and the outline of the path. Then suddenly, with, with present surprise, he saw a man standing just a few, a few feet away, armed with a bow and arrow. It was his father. He never been, he he had been there all night long, just like our Heavenly Father. You know, many times we are terrified, and we visualize all sorts of things about to pounce on us. Things we can't see or maybe don't understand. We want to call out to someone for help. The question is, who you are going to call? Who do you want to call? 
You know, I am convinced while I was preparing this sermon that God was and is and will always working for us. And that His kingdom does not and has not and will never shut down. We may experience many ups and downs in our lives, but we know for sure that our ultimate destiny is in His hands of the Almighty God who promises us that He will always be with us and help us when we are in trouble. The Bible says in our call to worship this morning, we recited Psalm 46, uh, verse 1 and following. God is our refuge and strength and a very pleasant help in times of trouble. Surely God is our refuge and strength and our ever-present help in need. God calls us to come to Him and He promises to give us help and strength that comes from Him alone. God is always awake. He's always ready to listen to what we need to say to Him. He never grows weary and He watches over us not a few hours a day or a few days a week 24 7 seven days a week and 365 days a year after Joshua was born July 27 1998 two days after he came home uh, from hospital and mom was exhausted she couldn't get up and do anything for Joshua at that moment so every two, three hours, as you know, baby wakes up for cleaning or, or milk, something. And I, I had to get up every two, three hours and hold him in my hand, you know, in my arms. And feed him or changing his diapers. And at the time, this passage came to my heart. You know, I was half sleep and half wake and feed him and then we have to burp him. I think nowadays they do the same thing to babies, right? You have to make sure that he burps. So, you know, you, you are in half wake and half sleep and then you do this. And I thought about how can God watches over me day and night? How come he never s sleeps and he watches over me and keeps me from all harms? You know, at that moment, I couldn't stop crying. You know, what God has done in my life. And it was my prayer to the Lord that, God, you have been my help all the days of my life. And you will be. And I want you to watch over Joshua as you watched over me. And as you keep this promise to me, and I want you to, Keep this promise to my son Joshua all the days of his life. Next time when you see your grand, you know, son or granddaughter, maybe baby was just born in a hospital, when you, you have a chance to hold them in your arms, recite this Psalm 121 and pray to the Lord. Your, Lord, you have been my help and my strength all my life. And I want you to do the same thing to my grandson and my granddaughter or great-grandson or great-granddaughter in your life at that moment. Brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you with this question this morning. And I want you to think about and pray about and give thanks to God if this is what happened to your life. Where does your help come is from the Lord or is from someone else or something else I hope and pray that you all confess that Lord you are the true help in my life and I can confess to you Lord this morning that 
you help me up to this point in my life. And we know that, I know that you will continue to lead me and guide me. And every time in my trouble, and you will help me from that. And you will deliver me from that situation that troubles in my life. Where does your help come from? Amen. I invite you to